بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه والسن بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The title of tonight's lecture is Wasting Time. I, I hope this is the right title. But before we go into wasting time, it is quite essential for us to know the value of time. Because we so often hear people say, let's kill time, as if time committed a crime and should be executed for that crime. Time in Islam is very important to the extent that Allah Azza wa Jal swore in the Quran with a variations of time. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالضُّحَى وَالْفَجْرِ وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى So Allah Azza wa Jal swore with the forenoon, with the dawn, with the night and the day. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of all. And therefore He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has the right to swear with anything He wishes. But we as individuals, we as slaves and servants, can only swear by Allah Azza wa Jal. We cannot swear by the Prophet والسلام, though we love him. We cannot swear by our fathers. We cannot swear by anything that is precious in our lives. The only thing that we can swear with or by is Allah and his beautiful names and attributes. And not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal swore by time itself when he said, Wal Asr. And what did Allah Azza wa swear by, uh, uh, for? It reads afterwards, Inna al-insana lafi khusr. The whole of humanity are in great loss, except those who fulfill the four qualities or characteristics mentioned in the surah. Why is the whole of humanity in great loss? Simply because they have lost the meaning and the use of time. And whoever loses these days, these months, these years, whoever loses time, then he is in loss. Because this is your capital. Any trade you go in, you must have a capital. And our capital in life is our time. And the majority of us, I will not say the majority of the people, because usually when giving an advice, I look at those who are to my left and to my right, and I never look at myself. The majority of us here are in great heedlessness, are in great ghafla. And this is what Allah Azza wa Jal described in the Quran by saying, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِرُونَ They know only the outside appearance of life, of the world, and they are heedless of the hereafter. And that is why we never think or evaluate things in the perspective that affects the hereafter. When we look and evaluate something, we evaluate it on materialistic basis. How much is it going to benefit me? How much real am I going to gain more? What is it, what there in it for me? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith narrated by Bukhari and other narrators, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاءِ There are two favors, there are two blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal upon the humans that they or many people do not make the most of and thus lose out. What are they? Good health and free time. Good health 
and free time. What is the word used by the Prophet ﷺ? مغبون. And it stems from al ghabn And we have the day or yawm at taghabun We have a surah in the Quran, right? By the name of taghabun A lot of the brothers saying, mm. yeah, there is, there is a surah. But maybe it's not a famous one. That's why we can't. يعني, uh, and know the name. We usually know only قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ قُلْ عَرُوا فَلَقْقَدُرْ بِالنَّاسِ And we make mistakes. But other than that, we don't know. No, there is a surah. And what is يَوْمُ التَّغَابُنْ? It's the day where people find that they have lost. Why? غَبْن in Islam is forbidden. And this is when you buy something that costs much less than what you're paying. Or when you sell something way less than what it is actually valued at. So uh, the Prophet is telling us that our free time, I'm not going to take about health. I'm not going to talk about health. I'm going to talk about free time. The Prophet is telling us, السلام, the free time that we have is a favor, it's a ni'mah, it's a blessing. Yet, we are fooled one way or the other for not utilizing it. And a lot of the Muslims, as you see, they waste time on nothing that's beneficial for them. If you evaluate, now it's 8.30 almost. If you evaluate what you have done since morning till today, what would you find in your record on the Day of Judgment? How many soap operas? Um, it's not my business. How many movies? How many songs? How many prayers you've missed? How many adhkar you've missed? All of this is, has nothing to do with me. This is something that you should evaluate as we will come to see, insha'Allah. The Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, for those who are heedless, for those who forget, and we all do forget. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the son of Adam will not be dismissed from before his Lord on the day of resurrection until he's been questioned about five things. So, am I going to be questioned on the day of judgment? I'm Sheikh. What do you mean? Yes. Everyone is going to be questioned, even the messengers and the prophets. La ilaha illallah. The messengers and prophets of Allah are going to be questioned? Yes, but their question is different than ours. Allah will ask and interrogate those whom these messengers were sent to and Allah would interrogate the messengers themselves about the response. So even the messengers will be questioned. Each and every one of us, the Prophet tells us والسلام, will not move from in front of Allah جل, on the day of resurrection until he is asked. What are the questions? The Prophet says والسلام, his life and how he spent it. If you're 60 years of age, if you're 70 years of age, if you come to a person like me, almost there, I'm almost 50 years of age. I am 50, not almost. When someone asks me, what about your previous years? How do you feel? Wallahi, as if it was yesterday. I can yeah, I relate to that. So 50 years of sin was, was fun, but nothing remains except the memory and the punishment on the day of judgment. Yet ask those who have been praying and going for Umrah and going for Hajj and doing Da'wah and making dhikr and reciting the Quran. 50 years has gone and nothing remains except the reward. You evaluate. The Prophet says alayhi salatu was salam. His life and how he spent it. His youth and how he used it. If you are a bodybuilder, if you are strong, you know, if you do MMA, mixed martial arts, if you are, mashallah, jiu-jitsu fighter, if you Brazilian or even Taiwanese, who cares? If you would do whatever you want, no problem. But you're going to be asked about your health. What did you do? How did you spend it? How did you utilize your youth? When you were 20, were you among those who used to pray taraweeh and qiyam al-layl in Ramadan, three, four hours? No, I wasn't. Now when you're 50 or 60, don't you regret this? Yes, wallah, I regret it. But, Salafi, no, it's not, you're going to be asked. 
This is a question you have to prepare an answer for. And the Prophet says, his wealth and how he earned it and in what did he spend it on. So, a lot of the Muslims, their earnings is from haram. Clear haram income. Yet, mashallah, mashallah, when they go to a restaurant, is the meat halal or not? But they're consuming riba, they're stealing money, they're taking bribes. It's an issue of dispute among scholars. But chicken, it has to be halal. Otherwise, astaghfirullah, I'm not going to eat it. So, people are crazy. Even if your earning is halal, assume all of your money, mashallah, is from halal income. You work with your own hands and you get halal money. The question would be, where did you spend it? Wallahi, I spent it on a satellite dish so that I can get hanky-panky movies. MashaAllah, internet connection. I spent it on going to uh, uh, beaches and to places that Allah does not permit me to go to. You're going to be asked, so prepare the answer from now. Yani, this is something that is inevitable as the Prophet said And then he said, and how he acted upon what he acquired of knowledge. MashaAllah, you find brothers who are knowledgeable in Islam. They know the difference of opinions and this and that. They know the ruling. They know how to get the information. What did they do about it? Did they act or was it only something rhetorical, something that is verbally said but not acted upon? This is something you're going to know on the Day of Judgment and Allah Azza wa Jal would ask you about. So whoever evaluates his life, he would know that he has done a lot of wrong to himself. And whoever believes in Allah, who's ever considered to be a good practicing Muslim, evaluates or values time. A good Muslim always values time. Why? Because he knows that there is a day of resurrection and Allah would ask you about every single thing. Not a small or large, every single thing. Ahsahu Allah wa Allah Azza wa Jal has calculated it, has registered, has recorded it, but they have forgotten it. So you'll come on the day of judgment and you'll find so many things to answer for and you can't remember. I did this. So many sins we do in the day and the night and we completely forget or make ourselves to forget so that we won't feel bad about it. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ This is one of the beautiful ayahs of the Quran, but it is one of the most scary verses of the Quran. One small ayah. Allah says in the Quran, did you think that we had created you in play without any purpose and that you would not be brought back to us? That you would not be brought back to us? Whatever you do, do it, akhi. Enjoy your life. Life is short. Make the best of it. Enjoy it. But wait until you come on the day of judgment. Wallahi, every single thing you've done, you're going to be asked upon. Every single thing, small or big. Do whatever you want. This is a dire warning from Allah Azza wa Jal that this life is not fun fair. It's not for us to play and to leave. The believer, and I pray to Allah that he makes all of us among these believers, will be called on the day of resurrection, enter Jannah. And this is a reward because of what you have forwarded, because of what you had done. And Allah Azza wa Jal, may Allah make us all among those. The kafir or the sinner thinks otherwise. And that is why each and every sinner and kafir would ask Allah Azza wa Jal the chance to be able to return to this dunya and offer good deeds. When death comes to them. And when they stand before Allah and when, while they are in hell. Three locations. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, until when death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord, send me back so that I may do good in which I have left. Is there any possibility? No. Subhanallah, those who are martyred in the sight of Allah, in the cause of Allah, they also call 
for the same request, and that is, send us back. But why? To die again in the cause of Allah. And then, to die again in the cause of Allah. Ten times. And Allah Azza wa tells them that this is not possible. No one goes back. The kafir, send me back so that maybe, so he's not even certain in the ayah, it says, maybe I will do something better. So even that, even at the time of death, he is not certain. Allah Azza wa tells us in another location. And if you only could see when the mujrimun, when those wrongdoers shall hang their heads before their Lord saying, our Lord, we have now seen and heard, so send us back another time. This is when they stand in front of Allah Azza wa Send us back. Will you say this? I don't know. Will I? I don't know. I hope not. So we have the time and we have the ability to do well now before death comes to us. And finally, Allah Azza wa says about those who are in hell. Therein they will cry, our Lord, bring us out. We shall do righteous good deeds, not that we used to do. So even in hell, and Allah Azza wa tells them, haven't I prolonged your life and you could have done whatever you wanted? Didn't my warning come to you? What is the warning? Some interpreters say it is the white hair. You've got white hair. What are you waiting for? Have you ever seen someone with white hair goes black again? Yes, if he dies it, it goes black again. But again, you're not allowed to dye it in black in Islam. A Muslim is forbidden to dye in black. Use any color. This is not our topic. This is the warning, as interpreters say. Some interpreters say, no, the warning is the Quran. The third say, no, it is the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu There are so many warnings that Allah sends to us, but we're heedless. So many times I, I, I'm, I'm astonished by people when they put a cigarette in their mouth. You know, they put it in an angle. It looks, wow, sophisticated, cool. And the guy goes with the lighter, chuk, 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 and it's not working. He, get, he does it 12 times, 10, 20 times. It's not working. Ya akhi, Allah is giving you a warning. Accept it. Halas, it's not good for you. He goes begging people. Ya akhi, do you have a light? Do you have a light? Do you have? He begs people. Subhanallah. And they reject him. They don't smoke. And he's adamant. Look how shaitan controls us. And this is one sin, huh? Cigarette. If you cascade it to all other th sins, may Allah have mercy on us. This life is a life of work. This life is a life of fulfilling Allah's commandments to us. On the hereafter, there is no work. There are no commandments. There are no forms of worship that you're obliged to do. It comes from within. You do it for the sake of Allah, praising Him, uh, glorifying Him. And that is why we never settle in this life. Expats, they travel from one country to the other. What do they do? I, I never seen an expat. I come from Saudi Arabia, I'm a Saudi. I've never seen an expat coming and buying a, a, a house and buying a piece of land and starting to cultivate the la, a, a, a farm, buying a farm, trying to work. Besides, it's against the law, but you would not find people doing this. Why? Because said, yeah, I'm here for five, ten years. I'm going back to my country. So I, I'm building my house in my country. Muslims are like this. Are we here to stay? Yeah, and if you ask anyone, any, even the sinful people, Akhi, how long do you wish to live? And he says, oh, well, Akhi, this is in Allah's hand. I might die tomorrow. I might die today. Okay, but you're sinning. Yes. But I may not die in 100 years. If you go to someone who's like me, 50 years of age, Ha, Sheikh, how long would you reckon you're going to live? Wallahi, akhi, the Prophet says, the ages of my ummah is between 60 and 70. So, if, I'm, if I reach 60, 61, alhamdulillah, I've, I've enjoyed life. This is good for me. If, wallahi, longer, may Allah grant us all health and wealth and good deeds. And if you go to someone who's 70 years of age, uncle, 
how long do you think you're gonna live? Wallahi, ya akhi, yani I heard that one of my cousins in my country, he's 90 years of age. So alhamdulillah, if I reach 90, okay. If you go to his cousin, uncle, how long do you think you're gonna live? Well, my son, I'm 90 years old, but Nuh lived 90, 950 years, so. Ya akhi, nobody is sick of this dunya. We want to live, and the longer we get older, the roots are further in the ground. It's very difficult to take us out. A true believer is always on the go. His bag is packed. Whenever they tell him, this is your ticket, this is your boarding pass, I'll travel. This is his objective, not to live in this life. His objective is to go to the hereafter and find his house there, his palace there. People come and look at your house, Ya Akhi, there is a, a window missing. You should have put some decoration here. Why should I? I'm decorating my house in heaven, inshallah, in paradise. This is how you should act, behave, and feel. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed Ibn Umar by the shoulders and said, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiru sabi. Be in this life as if you are a stranger or a passerby. When someone passes by like me, I'm here for four days only. I'm not asking about the price of lands. I should, the rents here are very high which is lucrative for me to think to buy a, a, an apartment and rent it. But again, this is not a good opportunity to discuss business. Nevertheless, I'm a, I'm a passerby. So I stay in a hotel and I travel, I leave. I'm not gonna stay here forever. And this is how a proper Muslim should do in this life. Get ready, pack your bag, furnish the house or the palace or the mansion in paradise. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, make the most of five things before five others. And this shows you the value of time. Make the most of life before your death. Because once you die, you've heard what the dead people said. Send me back. You don't have to ask this. You're here now. Let's see what you do. Health before sickness. So many people, I've heard this personally from people who are now unable to pray and prostrate on the, uh, 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 the floor. So many old people, righteous, mashallah, if you ask them, they're 70, 80 years, problem with the knees, they can't go to the ground. What is the most thing you miss? Wallahi, all of them say, putting my forehead on the ground for Allah Azza wa And they cried. One of the brothers cried. Is one of the uncles cried when saying this. Just because he cannot prostrate. How many do you know do not pray at all? Muslims, by identity. How many? And when you tell them, Akhi, pray, what would they say? In, in Saudi, we call them mutawwa'. Well, I don't know what do you call them here. Mutawwa'. Yeah, hey, mutawwa', pray for me. And go to hell. This is what they usually say. They mock. They, they make fun. So make the best of, or the most of, your health before your illness, before your sickness. Free time before becoming busy. I remember when I was in my 20s, I had nothing to do. I had one wife, one child, and the whole world in front of me. Now, the day is the same, 24 hours, but th there isn't enough. I wish it was 48. I don't have time for the kids, for the wives, for the business, for make a, 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 putting the bread on the table, for da'wah, for traveling, for sports, for uh, things that I want to do, for visiting my relatives, next of kin, my in-laws. My... Time is not enough. So I wish, but it's too late. The, this wish is not possible anymore. And the Prophet goes on to say, alayhi salatu wasalam, your youth before old age. And we've gone through this. And your wealth before your poverty. You save money in the bank? Alhamdulillah. Some of this money allocated for charity. Give it for the poor. Um, yes, but I, there is a ceiling I'd like to reach. Akhi, trust me. Use your money in charity. This will make your money grow. But if you don't, and it's all gone, then you would say, I wish. And this is 
not the time for it. Al Hassan Al Hassan Al Basri, one of the great Tabi'een, says, O oh, son of Adam, you are merely a number of days. Every time a day goes by, some of you is gone away. And this is logical, you know, when so many times we rush things. Ya yeah, Allah, when is, when is summer going to come? Why do you want summer? I want to the holidays. The holidays come, the new year starts, you go to school, you go to work. What is your objective? The next summer vacation. And time flies. Time flies, but we don't value this time that flies. And every day you take a paper from the calendar, this is part of you is gone. Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I abhor, I hate to see someone doing nothing. Doing nothing. Neither in dunya, things that benefit him. Ya akhi, I've seen so many people just sitting there looking at the ceiling doing nothing. I've seen people sitting with five or six remote controls. Not one or two, five or six changing channels and staying until Fajr. One of my daughters was telling me last week that she had a friend that spent 19 hours a day on the internet. Four hours of sleep. 19 hours. And I said, this is not possible. She says, Daddy, she wakes on the internet. She eats on the internet. She takes the internet to the bathroom. She does everything on 19 hours doing what? Subhanallah. So Ibn Mas'ud says, I abhor, I hate to see someone doing nothing. Neither for the benefit of his dunya, nor for the benefit of his akhirah. Yeah, if you don't want to pray, if you don't want to make dhikr, do something for the dunya. Increase your income. Learn a handicraft. Learn something that benefits you in the dunya, rather than just wasting your time on nothing. Al-Hasan al-Basri, again, tells us that I've met people and he's talking about the companions because he's from the Tabi'i. He said, I met people who were so protective on their time more than their wealth, money, dirham and dinar. Why? Because when an hour of your life goes by, it will never come back, will it? Can you say that, Akhi, wallahi, the five hours, the previous five hours were not that good. I'd like to erase it, delete it or cut and paste and do it again. No. What about the money? If you lose the money, if you waste the money, if you spend the money, Allah Azza wa will grant you something more. So don't you ever think of money plus, uh, 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 equals time. Time is more valuable and so many times I, I hope I'm not advertising for supermarkets. Huh? So many times I go to the supermarkets that charge me 20 or 30 percent more than other downtown stores just to save time. Because I know if I go to downtown, the vegetables is different than the fisheries, different than the, uh, the butchers, it's different than the groceries, and this consumes time. So I'd rather go to one place in an hour, collect everything, pay a little bit more just to save Time, plus I'm lazy. Um, time is gold. No, no, this is an understatement. Time is more valuable than gold because we said that gold can come and go. Time can only go. And if you look at the Prophet's time, والسلام, was he utilizing his time? Or did he have leisure time and free time? And Subhanallah. The Prophet والسلام, in his gathering, the companions say that we used to calculate him saying, Subhanallah, Astaghfirullah, Atubu ilayh, 70 times while he's sitting. And, and the Prophet said about himself, O oh people, ask Allah to forgive you and seek uh, or uh, repent to Allah and ask Him for forgiveness. Because I repent to Allah and seek His forgiveness during the day a hundred times. Now you ask yourself, when was the last time you said Astaghfirullah from the heart? 
After salah, we say, texting. The brothers, after salah, they're making adhkar and they're texting. What are you doing? The Sheikh utilizing the time. I have to, you know, instead of just wasting my time doing Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I send text messages and, and do this. What is this? The Prophet used to utilize his time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The companions, if we go and open this subject, it will take us until Fajr. But these are only bullet points. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. He accepted Islam on the seventh year of Hijrah which means that he accompanied the Prophet ﷺ for three and a half years almost. Yet, he narrated the majority of the hadith. Why? Because the Prophet supplicated, make, made dua for him. And he asked him, you know the hadith. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, what did Abu Huraira do? He used to divide the time, the night time, into three uh, uh, divisions, or three parts. The first part after Isha, until the first third is over, he used to memorize and study the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Because we all know that he did not write, he only kept it in his memory. And, and, and the tabi'in used to test him. They ask him a question and they come after one year and ask him about the same hadith and not a single letter is changed. So the first third, he used to uh, study the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The second third, he used to sleep. The third third, which is before Fajr, he used to pray night prayer. And in his biography, he had a brother and a mother, and they used to divide the night into three uh, uh, parts. Each one takes one third to pray night prayer. So that the whole house, there would be someone during the night praying. Ya khi, wallahi, this is something that makes us feel ashamed. Who among us, wakes his wife for night prayer to pray two rak'ahs with him. There are, alhamdulillah. Don't raise your hands. Huh? I know, mashallah, inshallah, the majority of you are like this. But it's a shame that the Muslims don't uh, practice the sunnah. The Prophet says, Aslam, if you pray with your wife two rak'ahs, Allah would record you among the dhakirin, Allah kathira wa dhakira. Those who remember Allah a lot, males and females. Two rak'ahs. How long will it take? Our standards, you know, because nobody's watching, it's night, uh, we want to go back to bed. It takes three minutes. Ya akhi, make it ten minutes. It's nothing. But Allah would record you this. Nobody does this. Why? I have work tomorrow. Okay. But you spend the night until one or two o'clock in a wedding in Saudi. I don't know about you guys in Qatar. Do you have late weddings as well? In, in Saudi, they serve the food at 1 a.m. What is this? Wallahi, I got four of my daughters married, alhamdulillah. And each and every walima, I'd write 9.30 is to be served or maximum 10 o'clock. And if you don't, if you, you're late, you're not going to find food. People come at quarter to 11, nobody's there. Tough luck. I put it on the, uh, the card. Why, ya akhi, utilize your time. And if you sit for three or four minutes, uh, hours, what will you do? Thicker, of course. When we're making dhikr, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, you're gonna backbite. You're gonna buy it. Oh, my friend did this, my neighbor did this, my ruler did this, my ambassador did this, my servant did this. Backbiting, backbiting. And the, 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 the best of them would talk about footballers. Yeah, this donkey, he could not score. And this ape could not uh, defend his goal. Subhanallah, they're Muslims, yeah, what are you doing? No, 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 they're footballers, it's okay. So, do we utilize our nights? No, we don't. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Do you know Ibn Jarir al-Tabari? Everybody's saying yes. You know Ibn Jarir al-Tabari? The compiler of the tafsir, the greatest tafsir of the Quran. He asked his companions, do you feel fit to write the tafsir of the Quran? And he said, yes. How many pages? He said, 30,000. He said, what? 30,000? You're crazy? We will die before doing it. So he wrote it in 3,000 pages only, the one we have. And then he told them, do you feel fit to write the history of mankind? And he said, and they said, how many pages? He said, 30,000. He said, 
Come on. This is too much. And he said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There are no aspiration. There is no him in the, 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 the chests of men. Ibn Jari al-Tabari, they've calculated his uh, uh, books that he had written and divided it on the time he lived. Of course, after reaching the age of puberty, 15 years, until the, 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 the date he died. And they found out that he used to write on average 40 pages a day. When, 40 pages a day? When did he read? What time did he give uh, Drus in the masjid, in the fatwa, uh, his family? Allah blessed their time because they worked for Allah. So many times you find people working so hard and having no blessing in their time. And people working so little, yet Allah blesses their time. Is, isn't that true? Do you find this uh, among you? That uh, among those you know, you find them blessed with being able to utilize the time. Abu Bakr Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him. After Fajr prayer, the Prophet looked. After Fajr, what is the beginning of the day? Fajr. Who among you is fasting today? Abu Bakr says, I. Who among you fed a poor person? Abu Bakr says, I. Who among you visited a sick person? Abu Bakr said, I. Who among you followed a funeral until it was buried? Abu Bakr said, I. <laughs> what were you doing? Yeah, you, don't, you don't get in, enough sleep? Yes, you don't, you don't go to work. <laughs> That's why. They don't, didn't go to work? He was one of the richest businessmen. And six of the ten heaven bound accepted Islam on his hands. So don't tell me he didn't go to work. He went to work. And he knew how to utilize the time. The Prophet said, whoever does these four things in a day will enter Jannah from any of the eight gates he wishes. Fast Monday, I know people do this. They fast Mondays and Thursdays. And in the daytime, they look for peasants or poor people and they buy them. We have it in, in Saudi Arabia, you don't have it here. al bake you know al bake huh? I'm not gonna advertise that. Everybody says, oh, Sheikh, please bring me one with you. Anyhow, and they buy 10 riyals, give it to a poor person. And then they go to a masjid next to a cemetery where people usually pray funeral prayers. Dhuhr or Asr, and they will find. In, in Saudi, we go to in Jeddah, Mecca. In Mecca, 15, 10, every, every Salah. So Alhamdulillah, we, we get a lot of good rewards. And then they visit a private or a local hospital, and they enter randomly, of course the same sex, huh? don't enter sisters, no, enter only brothers, and visit a sick person and supplicate to him and give him a booklet or a, Alhamdulillah, four things done in a day. And they do this every week. So many things you can do to enter Jannah. But you're, not, you're the one who's refusing to do this. A lot of us, when you talk to them, Akhi, isn't it time? He will say, Inshallah. And the Arabs are known for saying Inshallah. That's why the Westerners, when they hear us say Inshallah, say no. Please, don't say Inshallah. Say you will do it. Okay, tomorrow I will come Inshallah. No. You Saudis, you Arabs, when you say inshallah, meaning I'm not coming. Well, this is, this is wrong. And this shows how bad we are when it comes to practicing Islam, when we, when it comes to giving an impression to the non-Muslims. A lot of the Muslims, if you, Akhi, when are you gonna quit smoking? Uh, Ramadan inshallah. Okay, uh, uh, Ukhti, sister. When are you going to wear the hijab? Oh, after, inshallah, I perform hajj. I know a brother, wallahi, it's been 15 years, and he's smoking. And he's, mashallah, has the beard, he has so much love for Islam, but he still smokes. And every time, 15 years ago, I asked him this question, he said, inshallah, two months from today is Ramadan, I will quit. And every time I see him, I tell him, Ramadan did not come yet? And he still smokes. So this is one of the, the, the traps of shaitan. That he always tells you, there is time. There is time. Ya akhi, a lot of them would say, inshallah, when I reach 40. Ask everyone who is over 40. Huh? Said, well, I was talking about 40 years in, in the Hijri. Now I'm in the Gregorian. 
And if you ask him, they should know this is the Chinese years. You know, the Chinese years are much longer. So I don't know when I will reach 40. Subhanallah, what is this? Every time shaitan tells them, delay, postpone. Not knowing that the countdown has started. When? When did the countdown start? The day you were born. Your clock is ticking, but you don't know when it will stop. So you said, no, yeah, Sheikh, I'm still young, I'm 16. I know a lot of 16 years old who died. One says, no, I'm a footballer. Uh, I think a footballer or, um, no, the, the, the swimmer, huh? He was a gold medalist. He died last week, 21 years of age. He's, a, he's an Olympic, a gold medalist swimmer. And how strong and healthy can you be more than that? And he died of what? A heart attack. And he was discovered half in the tub and half outside. Khalas. When death comes, it comes. It doesn't knock any doors. It just come, comes in and claims what Allah Azza wa tells him. And if you know that the countdown has started and your clock is ticking, ask yourself, when was it the last time you've missed Fajr prayer with the congregation, or on time. Time here is, uh, Fajr is 3.30 approximately, mashallah. It's, it's, to us, it's, it's quite early. We're an hour uh, uh, behind you. But I asked this question to one of the brothers in UK. I was in a tour. So I asked, the guy was with me and I said, mashallah, akhi, when was the last, this is not interrogation, huh? I'm giving him a rasiha, I'm his uncle. And, then, and, and this is shocking. Nowadays, everybody comes and says, uncle, uncle, what uncle? You're still, I'm still young. But people preserve me as an uncle and I have to adhere to that. So I, I was just giving advice to the brother and I say, Akhi, when was the last time you missed Fajr prayer in Jama'a, in congregation? He said, <laughs> ask me when was the last time I prayed? I was shocked. The guy's beard was this long. And he's, you know, involved in da'wah and Akhi, what, what do you mean? He said, well, uh, Sheikh, I spend like all of my night preparing leaflets and doing banners and going to centers and announcing your lectures and I sleep at 2 a.m. So I miss Fajr. And I said, all of this is in vain. All your work is in vain because you would not become or get closer to Allah doing anything except or more beloved to Allah than the obligatory prayers, the fara'i. So you have a problem. You ask yourself, where, where does my time go? Does it go in watching movies and soap operas? A lot of the Muslims would say yes, unfortunately. A lot of the Muslims, a, a brother with, mashallah, practicing, looks practicing, short trousers in one European country, I'm not gonna call it. He was asking me, hey, Sheikh, wallahi, subhanallah, we were talking and said, did you see Hangover? I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, the movie is very funny, but it has, you know, good morals in it, good uh, advice for the Muslim. And I said, Akhi, is it halal to watch movies? And then the guy came back to his senses, whoops, I'm talking to the wrong guy. This is, this sheikh is halal haram, he's going to behead me now. Seriously. We have gone so far away from the basics. Even the basics Muslims don't adhere to. They know only a few things. Oh, khalas, I'm a practicing Muslim, I can do anything else. Watching movies, is it halal? Is it? You have doubts? Watching women on TV? Yeah, Sheikh, it's not beautiful. If she's beautiful, it's haram. It's not beautiful, it's halal. What is this? Watching soap operas? Listening to music? All of this is... Basics, yani any Muslim from outside would tell you, haram, is no. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us to lower our gaze. So all of this is haram. So where do you spend your time in? Some of the brothers, after Isha, Sheikh, please make the, the lecture a little bit quicker. Why? So, Wallah, ya akhi, there is something, I, I, what? There's something I'd like to see on TV. So and you, want, you want me to wrap it up so that you can go and not be late for your show? Subhanallah. Do you spend your time in video games? A lot of the young youth, 
you know, video games. Yeah, play video games if it's halal. Half an hour a day, okay. Refresh. But to spend like eight hours putting the headsets and talking to someone in America or in Australia, and yes, do this, do that. And jumping and breaking the, the chairs or the, throwing the councils. And I know a lot of the Muslims, the youth do this. Do you spend your time on the internet? Wallahi, I was once in a European country. I'm not making this up. I was going from one city to the other to give a lecture and a sister calls and says that my husband does this and that and he gives his back to the wall and he opens the laptop and puts the headsets and works until 2 or 3 a.m. after Isha and, and he's chatting, he's talking and I can tell that and you, when you, you, you know, never, we boys, huh? we never chat with, other, with boys and, 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 and laugh, do we? Do we communicate on the, on the internet and laugh? My wife always says when I answer a mobile, Say, I know that if the caller is a man or a female. I said, how do you know that? She said, when you say, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, this is a female. And you say, naam, this is a man. <laughs> I don't know. This is what she claims, but it might be true. It's, it, it's human nature. huh? So the sister was telling me that my husband does this and that. And I was saying that this is haram. She said, can you give him advice? And I said, yes, I will, inshallah, if I meet him. She said, Sheikh, he's next to you in the car. I was, uh, I was shocked. I looked next to me and the brother was very active in da'wah. But this happens, huh? We all have a dark side. We are all like the moon. We all have a dark side. But Allah Azza wa knows this. So you have to know, where am I wasting my time in? Some of the brothers, uh, yani they are... Uh, beach boys, not in the band, and they love to go to the beaches, spend six hours in, in Jeddah, where I come from. People love to fish. So they go Wednesday evening and they come Friday evening. No salat, Jumu'ah, praying on the boat, and they just come, yeah, go to the fishery, save your time, pay 100 riyals more, and get all the fish and just pretend that you've Got a, got a, a good, yani, mashallah, a, a bundle. Some of the people spend their time on off-roading, four-wheel drives to the desert, camping for three, four hour, days or so on. Some of them spend their time in watching wrestling. And I was shocked, a, a brother came, a young brother, 17 years of, of age, and asked me about someone. I said, oh, sorry, I don't know him. He said, no, there's a great wrestler and, and so on. And he, I said, what, is this sign language? He said, no, Sheikh, this is his, his move. <laughs> you wrestle with people doing this? I could be the strongest man. He said, no, 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 no. So I, I did this in a European country, in a masjid, and I did this and everybody laughed. Meaning, everybody watches this. This is awkward. Akhi, you've seen the outfit they wear? Yani, a man would not wear this to his wife, let alone wear it in front. And you looking at Aura? What is this? He said, no, 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 I watch UFC or MMA or, okay. Uh, Aura exposed? Yeah, yeah, Sheikh, but we don't look. <laughs> Why do you turn it on to begin with? So a lot of us, they have a problem with the definition of ibadah. What is ibadah? We, we all know the definition, so I'm not going to go into it. What is the purpose of our creation? To worship Allah. Are you worshiping Allah in your free time? Mm, yeah, Shaykh. One hour for Allah, one hour for myself. This is shirk. Because the hour for yourself is not for yourself. It's for shaitan. So you have a split personality. Now you're not... You're practicing Muslim, but you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You have a split personality with the people. Yes, Jazakallahu Khairan. Even if you play football. Ya he pass the ball, Jazakallahu Khairan. If you're running up, uh, uh, after your opponent, fear Allah, ittaqillah, give me the ball. What is this? And now, mashallah, all the football teams are doing this. Whenever they score, what do they do? They prostrate. Sujood al-shukr, mashallah, tabarakallah. Ya akhi, you didn't pray maghrib. 
And he'll make excuses. What are you doing? Well, it looks nice. Everybody's doing it. So, subhanAllah, we have a, pr a problem. We cannot become the rulers of this world again as Muslims unless we learn how to balance. How to balance our life. How to divide our time in a fashion that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with. As Muslims, we always have to give the priority to priority to huh? Allah Azza wa to Islam. So if there is a conflict, my Islam or my work, my Islam or my wife, my Islam or my desires and my hobbies, what do I put forward? My Islam. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, but seek with that wealth which Allah has bestowed on you, the home of the hereafter, and forget not your portion of legal enjoyment in this world. So the priority is for the hereafter. Yaqi, this, does this mean I have to stay in the masjid 24-7 wearing a long bead with 1,000 uh, beads in it and saying Allah, 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 Allah. I used to have a 1994 GMC, GMC, suburban. And this is a car that the mutawwir, the, the people of Hay'a, usually ride in. And mashallah, even that car remembers Allah. When you turn it on, it says Allah, 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 Allah. <laughs> so we, people used to make jokes about this. So does, does this, Islam, Islam tells me to do this? Do I have to sit in the masjid saying Allah, Allah, Allah? No, this is innovated, huh? It's not permissible for you to see. But is it what Allah wants me to do? No. The definition of ibadah is far greater than this. You can do ibadah by drinking water, by drinking tea. You could have intimacy with your wife, and this would be ibadah. You could feed your children. You go to the grocery and bring big bags of food, and this is ibadah. This is charity. So it can go on and on. The most important thing is that you utilize your time. If it's not for Allah, because you need time off, then make it for something that benefits you. I know brothers who are doing, wallahi, you, I, I was shocked. I met a brother who's very famous, Da'i, in UK. And I was shocked to know that he has four PhDs and he's 10 years younger than me. And he's working on his fifth PhD. <laughs> but you don't have time. And he's so active in da'wah. He's so active in publication. He's so active in so many things. I, well, I feel this small next to him. But Allah blessed his time. He knows how to balance time. Now you ask yourself, what did you do for the sake of Allah Azza wa What did you do for the sake of da'wah? When you go to the jungles of Africa and see the missionaries who are in their early 20s, finished college, going there, spending 17 years, 20 years of their time, giving da'wah for their falsehood. And with air conditioning, mashallah, tabarakallah, lights, cameras, action. No, nobody knows their existence. They're in the jungles of Africa with the mosquitoes, with heat, with a life that we could not tolerate. Yet they're doing it for what they believe. What did you do? Okay, Sheikh, I'm traveling tomorrow to Africa. No, <laughs> calm down. Don't be too aggressive. Think of your time, of your capabilities, of your abilities. You have the ultimate truth. No one can doubt this. Your Islam is the ultimate truth. But work for it. And each and every one of us could find a window of opportunity to help Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal is the most forgiving and the most generous. Your time can be utilized by saying so little and getting so much reward. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, 100 times. What does it do to you? What does it do? If you say Subhanallah wa bihamdih, 100 times, what does it do to you? Forgive all of your sins, even if they are as many as the foam of the sea. 100 times. Wallahi, it does not take more than three and a half minutes. Try it from walking from the gates tonight, inshallah, so I can get so I can get the reward, inshallah. Try it when you walk out to your car. Say subhanallah bhamdi, subhanallah bhamdi, subhanallah bhamdi a hundred times. Allah will forgive your sins. I will get the, uh, the ajr, inshallah. But you will get some. And don't worry. Utilize your time. 
the Prophet tells us alayhi salatu wasalam, that if you want to plant a palm tree or a, 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 a tree in paradise, say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. This is, I've said it, huh? With the intention of one, خلاص, it's one. So I can say a thousand times, and I have a garden, a big farm, a big plot of land, because I'm saying so many, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So little. But imagine, I remember one of my relatives, he passed away. May Allah have mercy on his soul. He was 60 years of age. He healthy, fit. He went to bed, woke up at 7 o'clock. His wife woke him up. He said, he was a manager. I don't feel like going to work early. I'm going to go at 9 o'clock. So he went back to sleep. She came at 11 o'clock. He was still asleep. Shook him. He was long dead. He died. This brother, may Allah have mercy on his soul. He's a cousin of mine. He, when I was young, I used to whistle a lot. Young, young boy, hearing a, mu uh, a song here or there, just repeating it by whistling. Sheikh, you used to listen to music. I was young. Do you think I was born with a beard? <laughs> I didn't ask my mother, but I don't think that I was born with a beard. So whenever he used to hear me whistle, what would he say? He said, if you say Subhanallah bihamdi, would it make your records heavy or lighter? And whenever I remember this, if I'm until today whistling, I would say Subhanallah bihamdi. The guy is dead and still accredited to him. I am exempted from whistling and I'm making dhikr to Allah Azza wa Jal. There are so many ways that you can utilize your time. Coming to the masjid, this is one of the best ways of utilizing your time. The Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu khayrukum, the best among you, is those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. When was the last time you were with a circle that teaches the Qur'an, or you were a teacher of Qur'an? Two verses. Imagine, you come to the masjid, and one-to-one, -one with a friend, with a brother, and learn two ayahs, two verses. The Prophet says, alayhi salam, to his companions, who among you does not want to go to that area which is close to the masjid and come back with one of the most precious and valuable two camels? And the, the companion said, Wallahi, Prophet of Allah, each one of us doing nothing, just go and bring two camels. And the Prophet said, yes. And he said, all of us love this. The Prophet said, by Allah, if you come to the masjid and teach or learn two verses of the Quran, it is better for you than two camels of them among the most valuable and precious camels. And if you teach or learn three, then you will get three. If four, then you will get four. Utilize your time. Do something for your akhirah, not quit your job and sit back. No, there are so many things you can do as a Muslim to utilize your time. Help a widow woman or an orphan. Support them, provide for them, take care of them. Give da'wah to the non-Muslims. How many non-Muslims embrace Islam on your hands? In Saudi, usually I tell them, how many uh, non-Muslims, how many Muslims rejected Islam because of you? Seriously, we, we have big issues. Muslims and, 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 non, and, and uh, yani Saudis, Qataris, all of us. We have our shortcomings, but we have to make up for it. So how many as expats or Qataris or Saudis, how many Muslim, how many people accepted Islam because of you? Wallah, nothing. Why? I'm still learning. Akhi, you're 90 years old. How? Until when you're going to learn? Akhi, only one verse you give. Only one da'wah. When you go into, in the cab with a non-Muslim driver, what do you do? Nothing. I show him that I'm an important person. I don't speak with him. Akhi, go and speak with him. Which country are you from? What's your religion? Why this and this? Throw something that would affect him maybe not this month, maybe not this year. In few years time, everyone goes in with him, would give him the same da'wah. Eventually he will accept Islam. You can do a lot of voluntary work. In non-Muslim countries, they have the uh, 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 volunteers doing uh, the CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. So what are you doing for Islam? When was the last time you saw something, a particle in front of you and you picked it and you put it in your pocket? This is what all the Salaf used to do. Al-Bukhari, Al-Mammalik, 
they used to put it in their sleeves and they used to try their best people not seeing them because they wanted this to be for the sake of Allah, not like me. I think. <sighs> Showing off. Do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, when was the last time you cleaned the masjid, you went to the, to, to, to the toilets of the masjids and cleaned it, did something for the community, akhi, not necessarily for the masjid. If you're uh, uh, um, uh, a person with, with engineering degree or mathematics, when was the last time you came to the masjid and said to the youngsters, listen, next week is exams. Any one of you needs help, I'll be there. I'm devoting my time between Maghrib and Isha. For any questions, I will solve it for you. Yeah, this is for who? For the sake of Allah. Wallah, Sheikh, between Maghrib and Isha, there is a tennis tournament. I have to watch it. It's girls, but I usually... A brother came to me after Jum'a saying, Sheikh, is it permissible to watch tennis and basketball and volleyballs? Uh, uh, games and matches, and I tell, said, told him, yeah, he, if they're, basketball is okay because they're wearing long uh, uh, pants or shorts or whatever. He said, no, 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 I'm talking about females. After Jum'a, wallah, the guy came to me after my khutbah. I'm giving the khutbah, I'm the imam. And he's coming to me, and I look at the guy, said, yeah, he, <laughs> I said, no, it's not. He said, because I enjoy watching yeah, and this, these sports. Watch the boys. Why go to the girls? You don't watch, you don't enjoy the sport, you enjoy, you know what? So subhanAllah, you do something for the community, come to the masjid, do whatever you can to utilize your time. With this I conclude my lecture. Those who would like to leave to attend their works or uh, schools or exams, you may go with Allah's uh, mercy and acceptance, inshaAllah. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد